ever wondered why cancer is a disease that plagues the earth? I mean, I'm pretty sure some, some of you may know people who passed away from cancer. I know some of my family, family members have passed away from such a disease that's still, still a toxic, still a plague to the earth. Now, what I'm about to say, some of you might disagree with it, but just, just hear me out for a second. The reason why we have such an issue with cancer and trying to get a cure for it, trying to find a cure for it, and we struggle with it so much because I believe there's a group of people who are alive on this earth that decided to be average. If that's not the truth, tell me why diseases like the bionic plague and um, leprosy and even the AIDS virus are now more under control. People are still doing the same thing they were doing, you know, thousands of years back. But why are these diseases, if not curable, under control today? Because somewhere down the line, a small group of percentage of people said, you know what? I'm deciding to be great. I'm, de I'm deciding and I'm going to not stop it. I refuse to stop. I refuse to be average. Why is there only one Malcolm X? Why was there only one Martin Luther King? Why was there only one Gandhi? Why was there only one Tesla, one JP Morgan, one Edison, one Harriet Tubman? Okay, we're gonna bring it to the live people. Why was there, why is there only one Will Smith, one Oprah, one Mark Zuckerberg, one Steve Jobs, one Bill Gates? Dr. Sebi, he wasn't really famous until his death. He was a doctor that cured many diseases, um, but he didn't have the notoriety like a Dr. Oz or a Dr. Phil and you know the group of doctors called, the TV show called The Doctors. He didn't have the millions of dollars that they have. But when he died, his fame just exploded. And he might not have had all the things that the popular doctors had, but he had the heart of greatness. Let me ask you a question. Do you have the heart of greatness even though you're not known like the next person is known? Because greatness always leaves clues. It always leaves an area where you can pick up and improve upon. And it's crazy because it was a prophet in the, in, in the Bible, Prophet John, in the Bible, in the New Testament, and John says something very interesting. He said there was one who's coming after me, whose shoes I'm unable to untie. And what he was simply saying is that there's going to be somebody who's going to live beyond my time, who's going to take it further than me, who's going to be greater than me. And the reason why the greats or there's less of the greats now is kind of becoming a thing of the past it's because we're not willing to pick up where they left off and take it further before the age of 26 I was making more money than my mother and my father combined and I still do this day still do to this day I told my mother and I told my mother and father when I was three years old and not that I was a, a genius kid or I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I was three. But I told my daddy, I said this, I said, Dad, listen, I don't know what, what it is you do, but I'm going to make more money than you one day. I told him that. Fast forward. I've taken it financially beyond what my parents have taken it. I has, they did all they could up until a certain point. So when I came, I said, listen, thank you for everything that you guys gave me, but I actually don't want to live like where we are right now. I see so much greater and I want, I want so much more for my life. So I'm going to surpass y'all. It wasn't an arrogant statement. It's just something that says, Hey, I appreciate you, but let me now take it a step further. Let me now go forth and go higher. So if and when I decide to have children of my own, 
It's like they're almost required to go further than me. It could be financially, it can be emotionally, it could be mentally, but whatever they do when they arrive, their job is to take it further than the last generation. Average is the enemy. Human beings may not have the, the, the lifespan or life expectancy of like, say, a sea turtle that lives, you know, about a hundred years or a little bit past a hundred years old, but we really don't need to. If you look at the, the, the expected of, of, of the greats, of the previous greats, and even the present greats, they're great now as they're still walking the earth. So if you look at it, it didn't take that long for them to make history or to break some type of record. So we really don't need to live hundreds and hundreds of years. It only takes a small pocket of our time span, of our life time span to be great. Let greatness be your normal. When anybody asks you, you know, what's your minimal standard? What's your minimal standard of living? You tell them greatness. I didn't say perfection. I didn't say materialistic. Because everybody that's great, anybody on the face of this earth is not perfect. But everybody has a level of greatness. Will Smith was on Ellen about a month or so, two months back, promoting his new movie, Aladdin movie. And he said something that caught my attention, and I believe he said something in a few motivational speeches. He said, fear has committed some of the greatest catastrophes known to man. And I'm going to say it again. Fear has committed... Will Smith said, fear has committed some of the greatest catastrophes known to mankind. And I actually believe, and I fully get everything he's saying in, in a sense of where fear lies in, 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 in an individual life. But can I tell you the second enemy that goes right along with fear is average. The average mindset of safe is deadlier. It's more than a, it's, it's bigger than the disease of cancer. Because even if we live and eventually we're going, we're going to die, but even if we live on this earth, if we can push past our fear, if we can push past our our average thinking and actually think higher, and no matter what the outside noise says, we're still going for it until it works. We will leave something that the next generation can pick up and not only pick up but approve upon and honestly i think i think it's time to have a a serious a serious heart to heart i'm not talking about with your friends i'm not talking about with your family i'm talking about with you because i can lie to my friends you know i can tell them little little you know nonsense lies that i want to hear it you know i can lie to my family members you know most people do to not hear the, the criticism or whatever it is that they want to spew on you, whatever, you know, they want to ostracize you about. I can lie to my family. But it's something about myself that even if I'm trying to tell a story in my mind, there's something about me that I actually can't lie to me. I can't live with the lie I'm telling myself. And there's always a truth because I really can't lie to me. So it's time for you to have that heart to heart. And then you seriously ask yourself, you say, hey, am I really living an average life? Like, is this something that's really happening for me right now? Am I really doing it? Like, just ask yourself, like, what should I be doing? What should I have done yesterday? What can I do today? What is my future? What am I talented at? Where's my skill sets? What is it that I'm passionate about? and love to do, that I can do right now without being paid, that I can sharpen up those skills and be phenomenal. And if you don't know the answer to that question yet, it, and because it, some, some, some people really don't know that answer. They say, listen, I, honestly, Felicia, I can't, I can't even, I can't lie to you. I don't know. Are you willing to search until you find it? Because a lot of people don't know, and I didn't know at one point, but I kept searching. Because I know that wherever I was, I knew this wasn't it. 
you ever have a moment because you knew this is what you needed some of you especially the, especially the ladies I, I do it myself some people have that you've been to a spa and with spa treatments and you know and you know the good ones and you know the bad ones because it's, 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 it's a feeling that you're looking for that when you go into the spa and you get your massage or you, or you lay on you lay in the pool or wherever you do in the spa and then once you have that moment you know that that is the feeling, that is what you were looking for to rejuvenate yourself. It's the same way when you know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm comfortable in this area. This is where I dwell. This is my dominant lane. Are you willing to search for it? And I know searching could be tiring because Especially if there's some things that staring us right in the face. You ever try to look for keys? And you're looking all over. You're almost late for work looking for these keys. And then you ask somebody, hey, have you seen my keys? And somebody just comes and simply picks it up right in the obvious area that you didn't see. Are you willing to look for it? even if it's staring you right in the face until you recognize it. Because when you find that thing, when you find that gift, when you find what you're meant to do on this earth at this time, you can be an answer to someone else's problems. You can be a gift to someone else. Don't be average. Average is the enemy. Because while you're trying to be safe, you're trying to play it safe and you don't take any chances, any, any risk. You don't even realize that you are in danger. You are in the most dangerous environment in your mind first and then outside of you because you have to know that nothing is safe. And playing it safe is a deception. Just think about it. Just think about it. If everyone on the face of this earth lived the average life, there would have been no airplane. There would be no light bulb. There would be no car. There would be no mass. There wouldn't be any mass production of companies that's feeding families all over the world. If everyone on this earth thought and played it safe and never took chances, we would still be riding on horses, you know, donkeys, you know, whatever we can ride on and or we just be simply walking because nobody decided to step out on faith nobody decided to step out step out on greatness and see something that wasn't to the natural eye it's almost like i would go so deep and to say average is almost a sin because everybody has something and if lebron james plays basketball I'm going to use him as an example. If he plays basketball, guess what? His son or the people who play basketball that's coming after him should take it a step further, should break his records. Michael Jordan has yet to have that competitor to win over six rings. He still holds rank in that area. So yeah, there's people who do the same thing you do. Yep, there's going to be people who are going to be singers. There's going to be people who are going to be modelers and, you know, actresses and different things that you currently do on the earth right now. But in your greatness, they're supposed to take it further than you when you leave here. Average is the enemy. And if you find that purpose. If you find what it is you're here to do, I swear to God to you, I swear, I swear to you, I swear to you that you'll find your greatness when you stop being average. And when you find your greatness, you'll find your freedom. If we all were average, not even the common cold would be curable. Everybody would die from like a headache or some type of allergy because nobody was great to actually take a chance and to keep testing and keep working and to keep picking plants apart and just going down in the earth and see what the earth has to actually come up with a 
a cure because we wanted to be great. And if everybody stayed in the average state, there's nothing that even this camera that I'm, I'm actually recording on wouldn't even be here. Average is the enemy. Thank you.